Um, okay, it's Lisa Fox here uh, with the Community Council, and uh, my dear friend Denise here is about to demonstrate well how she teaches doggy CPR um, because your great organization, Sunny Dog Inc. Dot com, go to the website so you can learn how to give your dog CPR in the event that, well, the doggy chokes and then what happens? Well, the first thing you always want to do is make sure the animal really needs your help because sometimes it could be an older animal that's sleeping or deaf and may not hear you and before you actually put your mouth on his snout, you want to make sure he really needs your help. So it's a good idea to create a vibration or call out to him, doggy, doggy, are you awake? Then you put your hand on the side of the chest to feel for any rise and fall of the chest as if he's breathing. If you don't detect any breathing at this point, you open the airway by pulling back on the chin, straightening out the throat area. If um, he has any opportunity to breathe on his own now, he will. But if he still needs your help, what you want to do... Because it happens so fast, huh? It does, and I mean, brain cells start to die within a couple of minutes mm. without oxygen, so you want to react quickly and effectively. You then would extend his tongue just past the canine so it's not rolled up blocking the windpipe. You close his mouth shut, which is the opposite of human rescue breathing. Oh. In humans, you pinch the nose and breathe into the mouth. With our animals, we close the mouth, and then we deliver two slow, full breaths right into the nostrils. Oh. Oh. Wait, look at the stomach. Wait, do it one more time. <laughs> okay, it's not funny, but look at the, the stuffed animals killing me. <laughs> well, and you obviously want to make sure you are inflating the lungs, because if you're breathing into it, and it's like breathing into a block wall, there must be some sort of obstruction here, and you need to alleviate that. So when you see the, 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 the body open up, then you're like, okay, it's working. Right, so you, that, you know you're getting the air into the lungs. You then come over here to the hind leg and put your fingers at the knee and roll inside, and that's where you check a pulse. Oh. If there's not it's a down pulse. down there? Yes, <laughs> the femoral artery. <laughs> if there's no pulse, that's when you want to begin CPR. And what you do is you bend the dog's or the kitty's um, elbow back, and that points to the area where the heart is. You put the heel of your hand over the heart, lock your fingers, and you know, in most cases, you would be on your knees leaning over the animal because he would be on the ground, and you start doing compressions to the heart. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And you alternate that with two breaths. Wow. Ten and compressions, two breaths for a and, medium sized and dog. And I think most people wouldn't know where to go on the animal, so it's on the side right there for both dogs and cats. Right. It's um, a movement you can do with your pet at any time just to detect the area. You bend the elbow back. It's not something that would hurt him. It's like moving at the joint like this. And that elbow points to right to where the heart is. However, you got to realize on our dogs and cats, you've got to get through the rib cage. Sure. And you also have to compress two balloons called the lungs because they surround the heart. Okay. So it's a bit more complicated than doing it on a human. But look at this stuffed animal. It's just like the best, but the best way to learn, right? And then you have kitty cat ones? Absolutely. <laughs> okay, you should have brought that one too, <laughs> as a cat lover. Okay, Sorry. for more, go to her website, sunnydoginc.com.